Hi everyone! In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to learn physics. Or really, not just physics, you can apply this into pretty much anything you want to learn in life. So, with school starting up soon, and this year it might be a little more challenging to learn than other years, I wanted to make this video on how to study more efficiently and how to learn more efficiently. Now, this first video I'm going to make is mostly going to be based on motivation, what motivates you to learn, and how you can improve this motivation to learn, because that's really the first step in learning, is you have to be motivated to do it. Nothing will drive you to do it, like, without your motivation at all. So there are three real components to learning. There's motivation, self-regulation, and social connections. Now in this video I'm only going to be focusing on the motivation aspect because frankly I think it's the most important, it's the most interesting to me, and I know the most about it. So we're going to get into motivation now. So what really is motivation? Well motivation is the drive to do something. Say I'm thirsty, that motivates me to go get a drink of water. Say if I want to learn what makes the atomic or orbitals there's certain energy levels, then I'll go learn about quantum mechanics. That's what motivates people, is very really much either an underlying idea that they want to know or an extrinsic thing that they value. So in the example I gave, being thirsty, you go get a drink of water. Uh, another extrinsic value is money. Maybe you think you're going to make money by learning a skill, such as maybe video editing or photo editing or anything, really. That's why this doesn't apply just to physics, but I am going to mostly focus on physics from now on. So one way to build your motivation is to build competence in this subject. So competence is your ability to actually do the subject, do the math, learn the subject itself, and that builds your confidence, and your confidence directly affects your motivation. If you're not confident, you won't have motivation to do something. So how do you build competence? Well, the best way to do it, and the way that most people know how to do it, is to practice. You want to practice as much as you can. That builds your skills of the foundational things you need to be able to learn more. So let's say I'm learning something new in physics about quantum mechanics, say the infinite square well. Well, what I need to do is I need to be able to solve the differential equation of the Schrodinger equation for each three potential regions and be able to apply the wave function requirements so I can complete the full requirements of the wave function. Now, if I don't know how to do any of those certain steps, then you need to practice them even more. So practice solving the differential equation. Practice splitting the potential into three different regions if you need to. Practice uh, the wave function requirements so that you know the wave function has to be you know, continuously differentiable. It has to be continuous. All those different requirements. It's in Hilbert space. All those requirements are things you need to practice and get good at learning to do before you can tackle the full problem of the infinite square well. So how you practice is basically either A, you do problems from the book or homework or something like that, or B, you make up your own problems. And that could be even better actually because it takes a higher level of understanding to be able to write your own problems and come up with solutions to them than it is to just get solutions from the book and just do them on your own. Being able to actively recall all these processes is also another important value. So you don't want to have to look at your notes or at a book every time you want to solve the infinite square well. You want to be able to memorize the steps required and know intuitively how to solve the problem itself. And then with that, you can, ev you can apply those ideas to even more problems. Say you want to do the finite square well. Well, you know all the information of the infinite square well, and instead of the potential being zero insta inside of the well, you just put a potential v naught, and you do the exact same thing, 
and just solve the exact same differential equations except for a different potential that you're solving for. And so that's what builds the competence. You give the, get the skills that you need to solve the equations, to solve the problem, and you build the acquired knowledge to do it. Now, one suggestion I give for being able to build competence is by doing the problems. And if you do get stuck on some of these problems, don't seek for help or seek for solutions. Seek for guidance through them. Say you're solving a problem on the infinite square well again. If you're stuck solving the differential equation, don't just look up the solution to the differential equations. Look up how to solve them or look up even if you want to look at solutions look through the solution to the part you need try to look through each step and logically look through them see if it makes sense to you and then throw the solutions away and then solve it yourself don't just get guided through the problem because then you don't really learn anything you're not going to be actively recalling at least if you look through the solutions and find it you have to actively recall what you've seen and the solutions to the problem the rule i normally use is a rule where i work on a problem for at least 20 minutes completely by myself just go at it for 20 minutes and if i'm completely lost I still try to work on it, try to find different solutions for at least 20 minutes. And then after that, I will seek guidance. I'll seek help from a friend, help from the book, help from the notes. If I really need to, I'll find the solution manual and find the solution to the problem I'm working on. And then after I find that guidance, I'll go through the problem myself for another 20 minutes, try to solve it again completely by myself. And if I cannot still do that, then that's when I need to seek active guidance and start learning more about, you know, what it is I'm doing. Maybe I'm trying to find the solutions to a harmonic oscillator potential. That's pretty difficult. There's a lot of steps to it. And maybe you do need to actually actively memorize each step to do it in order to complete the problem. Well, if you need to actively memorize each step to solve the problem, that's okay too. But you need to make sure you understand each step and what it's doing so that you can solve the similar problems like that. Because you know the end result in the harmonic oscillator has to be a Gaussian distribution. So you can intuitively think, oh, you know, the harmonic oscillator potential goes up like that. So the distribution goes up like that. You can, you can use these types of things to actively recall or actively learn how to solve these equations what they should or shouldn't be, and what they should or shouldn't look like at the end. You learn by practicing these problems as much as you can and trying to fully understand what you're doing in the problems and understand how to solve them every single time, regardless of, you know, if the question's worded differently or if there's different variables involved. The next part of motivation is autonomy. Now, autonomy is the willingness to do these things by yourself. So if you're taking like an online class, autonomy is gonna be a really important part of what you need for motivation. And you know, this is, could be a good thing for you too. Now you get to choose how you wanna study, how you wanna do your homework, how you wanna solve your problems. Everything is your own choice now, which is a little overwhelming, but once you get a system in place of what you like to do, then your autonomy kicks in and you consistently can do that and it motivates you even more to learn and solve these problems. Now, a lot of people think that learning by themselves requires a lot of reading and a lot of note-taking. While these are good things to do, reading books are very helpful, but if all you're doing is reading and just like taking little notes while you're reading, you're not gonna learn too much. What you need to do is be able to actively recall the information that you're taking. So what I like to do is if a professor gives me notes before a lecture, I will look through the notes before the lecture and I won't even take notes during his lecture. Instead, what I'll do is I'll actively try to recall what comes next in the step of the problem he's solving or the proof he's doing and try to actively solve the problem by myself before even he can. 
And that's a great way to learn. That's how I was able to, you know, learn electricity and magnetism, my weakest subject. I did terrible in the class until I started doing this method of note taking, which ironically is not note taking. Now, after you absorb the information, whether from a lecture or a video or from a book, the best thing to do is to quiz yourself on what you just did. So if you read a book, write a little quiz about like each paragraph as you're going or each section as you're going, and then take that quiz at the end. You have so you can actively recall what information you read in each section of the book. Maybe you went to a lecture. Well, you can write down little questions from the lecture that the professor asked or that you thought of during the lecture and try to answer them yourself after. This form of taking a little quiz after you absorb the information is actually proven to be very effective in retaining long-term memory. So if there's one thing I want you to do, it's that. Now, one last tip for autonomy that I particularly enjoy, but is not backed by a very good scientific evidence that it works, is rewriting notes. I really enjoy writing notes, but notes aren't the best way to actually learn information. If you enjoy doing it, that's great, and I think you should do it, but if you dread taking notes at all, then there's no point in rewriting your notes. What I typically did is I would go to lecture, take my notes, do my quiz for myself after the lecture, and then later that night, I would rewrite the notes again. That way, there's three times in one day that I absorb all the same information. And if you can consistently absorb this information for more times per day or per week, then you're more likely to remember all of it. And that comes back to the consistency in the practice that you do. So if you're able to consistently get practice and consistently absorb the information that you're trying to learn, that's the best way to actually actively recall the information. Now, I know I've given you a lot of tips so far, and really, all you need to do is choose two or three of them and do those. Do the ones that work for you the best. That's the best part about this autonomy part of motivation is it's up to you to choose what you want to do and what you enjoy doing best. And maybe you enjoy doing something else better for studying. Maybe you do enjoy doing all the problems in the book or doing random problems you find online. That's fine. Do those. One thing that you need is to be consistent in your learning. You Be consistent in absorbing the information and actively recalling it. Typically what I like to do is I would get a homework assignment one week and it's say it's due on Friday. I would try to do it all by myself on Monday. Uh, I obviously couldn't, so I would then on Tuesday try again all by myself but then seek guidance for one of the problems and try to finish that problem all by myself after that and just go through the process every single day. I would never try to do one homework assignment for one class in one day. Instead, I would try to do one or two problems from each class every single day. That way, I break up the information into the entire week so I'm consistently actively recalling information from each class. And now the last bit of this motivation section is relatedness. Now relatedness is how much this relates to your everyday life. And you know, we're students, so most of it's gonna relate to our everyday life because we're gonna have to do it either in homework or in science experiments we're gonna do, lab experiments we're gonna do, or really just everyday life too. We do physics, we like, you know, throw something and it falls. But yeah, so being able to learn stuff like that, like basic kinematics, definitely applies to everyday life. Even if we're just looking at like solving homework every single day or solving problems every single day, studying for a test every single day, that affects everyday life. And that's one of the big deals for why relatedness is such an influence into motivation. Because if something is related to your everyday life, 
you're way more motivated to learn about it than if it doesn't affect your everyday life. Another way to make these physics concepts more related to your everyday life is to use the Feynman technique and try to explain these concepts to someone who's maybe not a physicist, maybe someone not in your class, maybe even someone in your class because they don't understand it, or really anyone. If you can explain things correctly and efficiently to someone, then that means you can fully understand the concept. And then you can also see how it relates to, you know, your certain outcomes of things. Test grades, homework grades, how you're doing in your classes, and that's another part of what motivates us to learn physics. And that's what's great. A lot of people have all different outcomes and all different goals in why they're trying to learn these subjects. So it's very interesting to see, you know, what motivates you could be completely different from what motivates me. So in the end, everyone needs to be motivated to learn. Without any motivation, we won't learn anything. And this is one of the most important ways that we can do good in discovering new physics and learning the new concepts that we need to for our classes. One way to do it is to do repetitive book work or problem solving, being able to learn the foundations of these problems and actively recall how to solve the problems and what needs to be what steps need to be done to do it and actively solving these problems with the guidance that you can get if you absolutely need but trying to do it by yourself as much as you can so you can actively recall how to do it you can rewrite your notes to make them look better to absorb the information more and the most important thing is to try to quiz yourself after every time you absorb information after you read your book or you take notes in lecture write down little questions as you go through them and take that quiz that you just wrote right after you absorb the information if you can you know take notes during lecture or while reading the book then take your quiz after that and then rewrite your notes later that night that's three times you absorb the information in one day. And that's three times as much as most other people are gonna do. Try to spread out your homework so you're not doing it all on one day. Try to split it up so that you do it consistently throughout the week. So every single day, you're going to act, have to actively recall the information that you're learning. All right, and that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and found any useful information from it. And please subscribe if you want to find more videos of physics and how to learn physics. Alright, thank you.